Thank you very much. All right, so um, Mabel Kisawa Asafo will be presenting sickle cell management in pregnancy, the role of the midwife in a teaching hospital, Kumasi. She is a nurse midwife specialist, regional health director at Ghana Health Service, Ashanti, Ghana. All right, Mabel. All right, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Do I have the handle? Okay. Right. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful to be here with you to present to you on the topic management, sorry, sickle cell management in pregnancy, the role of the midwife in a teaching hospital in Kumasi. Yeah, we'll be looking at this outline for the presentation. That will be the objective, research methods, findings, and conclusions. Yeah, sickle cell disease is a, a mostly a disease that is common worldwide, a genetic disease that is is affecting a lot of population in the whole world and it has really affected a lot of people formerly it used to be known as a black disease but now i think the slides are just moving from one place to the other I need to go back. Okay. And Mabel, if you'd like help with your slides, I'm happy to move them for you. If you want to, if you, if you can see them well and you're not comfortable moving them, you could just say, if you want me to move them, I'm happy to do that for you. Okay. I think I'm on the introduction slide, but it has jumped to the objective. Okay. So do you want me to just quickly move them back to the introduction slide? Okay. Shall I do so that let's for you? Yes, please. Okay. All right. Would you like this slide or this one? This is the methodology. What I see is the methodology. Okay. We've got on showing at the moment is introduction slide, slide 15. That is what you see there, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. All right. So, a sickle cell disease is the most common genetic disease in the whole world, which has affected a lot of populations, and it has it comes with its own various complications affecting worldwide. It used to be a disease of blacks, but because of migration, now it has become a global disease, and therefore everybody in the whole world is being affected. And it is a disease that is inherited from both parents. It's not that only one parent is affected. No. For a person to be born with sickle cell disease, it means that both parents had a trait of a sort. And the child, the unborn child, inherited traits from both parents. And when a person with sickle cell disease gets pregnant, the person suffers a lot of complications complications and problems, among which are preterm labor, low birth weight, maternal death, and then conditions such as hypertension in pregnancy and others. Next slide. But currently, it is estimated that pregnancy in women with sickle cell disease in Africa is very high. The mortality rate is very high and it stands between 7 and 12 percent. However, those women with sickle cell disease, when they also get pregnant, it affects them so much that they stand a chance of dying 
22 folds compared with those without sickle cell disease. I can hear some noise. I wonder whether everybody is hearing me. Can I go ahead? Mute their microphones if you are. Check your microphone and make sure it's muted. Okay. The microphone is on. It's turned blue. Is that okay? Mabel, you're wonderful. You keep. You can keep going. Okay. Okay. So. People, uh, people with sickle cell disease, when they get pregnant, they stand a chance of dying 22 times more than those without sickle cell disease. But currently, a lot of research has also shown that if people are managed with a multidisciplinary multi team, it will help them to be able to improve their condition and then the death rate by about 89%. And therefore, it is important that People with sickle cell disease, when they get pregnant, they are managed with multidisciplinary team, which includes the midwife. However, a lot of research conducted has been done in UK, the developed countries, US and other places, and not much is done in Africa. A lot that has been done in Africa also look at pregnancy outcome and others, and little is known about the midwife's role in managing sickle cell disease in Ghana. And that is why I chose to research to explore the midwife's uh, role in managing sickle cell disease in Ghana. So, the method used was qualitative, that is, to be able to explore the views of the women, or the, sorry, the midwives who are managing these people so that we know exactly what they are doing with these women. And senior midwives were chosen because sickle cell disease is known to be a high-risk pregnancy. And therefore, all the women who, are, uh, who report with pregnancy should be nursed with people with expertise in midwifery and then obstetrics. And therefore, senior midwives were recruited and in-depth interviews were conducted with 17 senior midwives. It was a purposive because of the high risk nature and the fact that senior midwives with expertise are supposed to manage them. And then the data was analyzed using thematic analysis. The objectives of the study was to assess midwives' knowledge regarding the obstetric management of sickle cell disease and to describe the practices of the midwife in preconception care of women with sickle cell disease and to also explore the care that they provide for these women during pregnancy, labor, and postpartum. It was also to identify the challenges that they encounter whilst they are offering their services and also to determine how they can uh, improve on the services that they provide for these women. So the findings were that a lot of them were aged between 30 and 60. So the lowest age was 31 and the highest age 59. They were midwives of senior level, ranging from midwifery officer, that is the MO, to the highest level of DDNS, which is the Deputy Director of Nursing Services. So they are all within the senior midwifery categories. And there are also people who have had a lot of working experience. And the least person with experience is six years, with the highest being um, 30, the highest experience is 37. Yeah. They also were selected from workplaces, antenatal clinics, postnatal clinic, antenatal ward, labor ward, 
and then all the uh, uh, areas of midwifery services provision. The themes, 10 themes came out of the various findings, namely scope of midwifery practice, knowledge on managing sickle cell disease, their competencies, their practices during preconception, practices in antenatal, practices during labor, practices during postnatal, and then whether they have any guideline that is guiding them in their management. So on the scope of midwifery practice, they shared their experiences or their knowledge on what they think is their scope of midwifery practice. And one midwife indicated that the midwife is supposed to care for the pregnant women from the beginning of pregnancy until delivery. After delivery, the midwife takes care of the woman for six weeks before handing her over to the community health nurse. Another also indicated the role of the midwife is not limited to pregnancy alone. It extends to the men as well because in family planning, we include them. Our practice also involves adolescent health, antenatal and postnatal. So they were just giving out their knowledge about what they know to be the scope of the midwife. Another also indicated, recently I learned of critical care nursing, which we now do as midwife. For about three to four years ago, the obstetric and gynecology now have our own intensive care unit. So midwives are being trained in critical care nursing. And I also know of anesthesia, which midwives can also train. So they think that the ops and gyne units within the hospital has now started training midwives in intensive care. And then they can also go into critical care nursing as well to expand their scope. On the knowledge in managing sickle cell disease, generally midwives had a fair idea about what sickle cell disease is and they express their views and the signs and symptoms that are associated with it. So one indicated that it is hereditary. They have types such as SS, AS, AC, depending on the electrophoresis that determine the type an individual has. There are some features that when seen can determine if the person has sickle cell disease. Their teeth is prominent, the forehead is bulged, they have jaundice, and fingernails are like drumsticks. They have crisis, severe joint pain, and jaundice. That is a midwife sharing her experience. Another also said, in sickle cell disease, instead of the normal cells, they have sickle cell shape of their red blood cell. They have crisis, joint, and bodily pain. They are bound to take folic acid and other supplements. They are advised to visit their clinic regularly. That is also another person sharing her experience. And then on the competencies of the midwives in managing sickle cell disease, we try to find out how their uh, pre-service and in-service trainings have prepared them to be able to manage people with sickle cell disease. And on pre-service training, one indicator that it has prepared me adequately, at least I have the skill to manage the clients. And if there is any emergency, I will be able to manage it. But some of them also said they were not taught how to manage women with sickle cell disease during their pre-service training. As one said, in fact, during my time of training, there was not much done on caring for women with sickle cell disease in pregnancy. For in-service training or after school, what they go through in terms of training, they indicated, as one said, I have not had any other training in sickle cell disease on the job. Another also said, no, not even a workshop. In fact, they don't organize workshop for us, but we have been told that since this place is a new unit, they will organize training for us in diabetes, sickle cell disease, and all the medical conditions in pregnancy. That training has not come on yet. Yes, there was another, uh, there was a, a, a unit in the Confanoche Teaching Hospital where I conducted a study, which is known as the fetal maternal unit, where they manage medical conditions, including those with sickle cell disease. So they said that that unit has just come up and they have promised to train them. However, that training 
has not yet come on. On their practices in preconception care, almost all the midwives indicated that there was no program for preconception care in the teaching hospital. As they indicated, one said, in Confanoti, we don't do prenatal care. The fetal maternal medicine for obstetrics and gynae is now trying to look at that aspect of care. But for now, there is nothing like that. I have been there for seven years and have not provided preconception care to mothers. We just start with antenatal clinic when they come. That's somebody's experience. Another also said, we do not do preconception care here. We only see them when they come on admission. Then, what they are finding is uh, their practices during antenatal care. They also mentioned what they do during antenatal care provision. One indicated that we give them antitetanol injection. Some of them are allergic to SP. SP is an anti malaria prophylaxis called sulfadoxin pyrimetamin, which is given to them uh, to, as a prophylaxis against malaria. So we give them mosquito nets to prevent malaria. We educate on diet, fluids, fruits, and fibers. We do liver, heart checks. WBC has white blood cell, full blood count, FBC, urea, and creatinine. They do that once at the reporting and when they are at 36 weeks of gestation. The another also indicated midwives do not do much apart from checking their blood pressure, weight, and height. Usually, if um, the one sitting at the registration table, we have specific indicators we look out for. Example, those with high blood pressures, resource negative mothers, mothers with HIV, and those with sickle cell disease are given priority care. We usually group them and allow them to see the specialist doctor. So that is another person's view of how much they, they do or how much care they provide for women with sickle cell disease in pregnancy. For their practices during labor and delivery, midwives again share their experiences on how much they do or how much uh, effort or work they, service they provide for them. As one said, we see to it that the mother has an IV line, that is intravenous line. We administer normal saline and call the doctor. We also check the vital signs. We do vagina examination, monitor patients using the pathograph. If the person is due for delivery, we deliver them and continue with the infusion. We offer prescribed tramadol. Another also said at labor, pain management is number one. Oxygen is also kept at their side and we make sure we hydrate them. When they get to second stage, at times we speed the stage by either giving episiotomy and encourage them to push or we do vacuum aspiration for them. Finding out on their practices during postnatal, Again, they also share their experiences on what they do for them for postnatal care. One said, we nurse them differently from the usual postoperative care we give to the other patients who don't have the disease. What we do is that we give them more fluids like hydration, unlike the normal patient who don't have the disease. When they come, when we give them the infusion postoperative day one or even six hours postoperative, they are given sips of water or tea. And then we discontinue the fluids. But with the sickle cell, after the surgery, we continue with hydration, even if they start the sips of water. So they were trying to uh, distinguish between the care they provide for women with sickle cell disease and those who don't have sickle cell disease as giving them more fluids than those who don't have sickle cell disease. Another also said for postpartum, for postnatal care, they go for immunizations for the babies and seek family planning counseling for the mother. Funnily enough, most of the people I have talked to do not want to go for the second time at all because the experience is so bad. If they know their spouse's genotype or not, the baby should be screened and seek medical intervention. 
personal hygiene cuts across pre pregnancy through to after delivery their medication should also be taken yeah so this is also another person who was expressing her view that they have to be taken some people because of the experience they have had in giving birth they just don't want to embark on any pregnancy again so to find out about whether they have any guideline that is helping them to provide services they indicated that they don't have any specific guideline for providing services as they indicated that no there was nothing like that the little training i had in my pre-service is what i was using to manage them i have not seen any protocol since i started working here another also said i have not seen any protocol we normally manage by the instructions of the doctors so that is the guidelines or protocol for management and then those who felt there could be a protocol also share that well i know that there may be one just that they have not been posted or displayed on the walls for us to see and that is a bit funny because if there's a protocol and it's not accessible then i don't know who will use that protocol for management yeah. so on the challenges the midwives face in managing sickle cell disease again they express their view about the kind of challenges they go through as one said the first one is that we don't have enough machines like the common pulse or zimeter we had to complain for long before we had some we give oxygen without knowing the percentage which is not good enough we have a lot of challenges when they are in crisis we want them to be on a monitor and that means pushing her to the icu that is intensive care unit if every ward had a monitor, it would be good. It means that wards have no monitors. It is only at the intensive care units that monitors are. So if a patient is in crisis and you need to put the person on monitor, you have to push the person to the intensive care unit for that particular kind of care. Another said, it is not enough. It is not, sorry, it is not everyone who have knowledge in managing pregnant women with sickle cell disease. So the protocol should be made available on the wards and clinics so that if a midwife is alone on the ward, she can refer to that for management. The only thing I know is relieving pain. If a patient is in pain, I can set up normal saline with tramadol for her. Apart from that, I can do education too. That is all. So they should make a protocol available that is a kind of direction for managing women with sickle cell disease so in concluding on the findings it was identified that midwives had inadequate knowledge about sickle cell disease in general and in managing women with sickle cell disease they were not playing their role as coordinators in managing sickle cell disease in pregnancy thus it is indicated that in normal pregnancies midwives play lead roles but when it comes to risk pregnancies they have to coordinate the role among a multidisciplinary team there is no established multidisciplinary team for managing sickle cell disease that was found at the facility and then the study has also revealed that sickle cell disease in pregnancy is a high risk therefore the women should be managed by a team of specialized healthcare professionals, including midwives. The midwives play a coordinator role within the team to ensure that the women and babies are cared for adequately. So the recommendations are that the midwifery curriculum should include genetic conditions and genetic counseling. And the tutors should ensure that the topics cover all genetic conditions, including sickle cell disease. It is also recommended for the training schools that, or after school, that it should be continuous in-service training. When they come out of from school, the clinical side should also have in-service training for the midwives to be able to up update them on the new things that are occurring in sickle cell disease. There should be effective management. In effective management is best done when there is guidelines for practice. So it is also recommended for the clinic, the hospital, that is the Confanotti Hospital,
to be able to come up with a guiding protocol for managing women with sickle cell disease. Then the multidisciplinary team that is also a standard and recommended that every facility should ensure that they use should also be established in the facility so that the midwife can play a uh, coordinator role. And then the reproductive and child health directorate of the Ghana Health Service, also in collaboration with the non-communicable disease unit, should come up with a strategy and standard protocol for managing sickle cell disease, which could be used as an in-service training material for new entrants. The non-communicable disease uh, is now in control of sickle cell disease in Ghana. So when it comes to policies for sickle cell disease, it has been pushed under the non-communicable disease control unit. And therefore, if they collaborate with the Ghana Health Service, they'll be able to come up with a protocol for management. Preconception care must be taken seriously by the Confanochi Teaching Hospital and the clients should be monitored and followed up to receive the care. There should be increased community awareness of sickle cell disease and its complications so that couples will also take informed decisions for a better life. So that brings me to the end of the presentation. Acknowledgement to all the midwives that were used for the presentation, the other people who supported with this research, and everybody, including you, listening to me today. Thank you very much. Thank you.